All right, we're joined now by Sean Devaney, of course, great writer, Sporting News NBA, covers it uh, top to bottom. Sean Tiki and Tierney, how are you today, buddy? What's happening? I'm doing well, guys. How are you? Awesome. Uh, I'll tell you what, I think the first move that Magic made, and uh, I threw this out by, you know, past Tiki, I want to, tell, I want to see if you share my, my sentiments here. I think it was a, a great move because I don't think that Lou Williams, who I think uh, certainly I, I like, but I don't think his value will ever be higher. His actually, I'm sure you know this too, his effective field goal percentage is, is the best of his career. He's averaging 18 whatever points. And I think the, the Lakers preyed on the desperation for the Rockets to get a little more punch and pop off the bench here. So I thought that Magic showed some real acumen getting in a respected veteran like Corey Brewer, show the young kids out of practice, and a future for and a first-round pick. I like the move. Yeah, I, you know, it's 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 really it's a something for nothing kind of deal because uh, you know the the pick doesn't have any protections on it or anything like that. So uh, you know, it's 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 not uh, a blockbuster by any stretch. And I will say, look, Mitch Kupchak was close to to trading to trading Lou Williams for for a similar package, uh, and they had done a nice job as an organization to kind of create some value for him. Uh, you know, teams like New Orleans were interested, teams like Washington were interested, uh, and I know Charlotte was interested. Uh, so there was a lot of interest in Lou Williams, uh, despite the fact that he was pretty much a bargain signing uh, uh, and uh, and really not some somebody who before the season would have started that you thought, uh, okay, yeah, you can probably get something valuable for him. Uh, but yeah, for, for them to get something in return for, uh, for for Lou Williams at this point is obviously of, not of much use to them. Uh, that's that, yeah, that's a, that, that that's a pretty good return for them. Sean, there hasn't been a lot of success of former superstars getting into this executive role. Jordan and Isaiah and Elgin Beller, ones that come to come to mind. Obviously, Jerry West has been great, and and Larry Bird is holding it down in Indianapolis. Uh, but what do we think of Magic in this role, I and mean, what can he provide? Well, you know, I, I think the main thing is, I think there's a couple things. For one thing, he did a, a smart thing, and that was hire Kobe's uh, agent, Rob Palinka, uh, as the GM. And, and you know, he's a guy who, um, you know, has the relationships uh, with players, with agents, and, 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 and he's one who can really, uh, you know, do a lot of the grunt work, do a lot of the, uh, the nuts and bolts stuff. I think one thing that, that was frustrating to Jeannie Buss, who, who ultimately made this decision, was that when they would go into free agent meetings, uh, the, 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 those meetings did not offer much life. You know, when Jerry West was there and, and he met with Shaq back in the 90s, uh, Shaq was sold. Uh, they didn't really have, you know, between Buss and Cupcheck, they weren't the kind of personalities who were going to go in there and, and, and sell a star on coming to L.A. And I think that that's one of the things that they're hoping with Magic is, is, is that he's got the smile, he's got the, uh, uh, the rings, he's got, you know, he, he, he's got enough credentials in terms of that where he can be a good salesman for the Lakers, really something that they haven't had lately. Uh, and then Palinka can do, like I say, a lot of that grunt work. So I think the combination there is, is, is what Jeannie Buss was after because it was something that, like I say, they weren't getting uh, with Kupchak and, and, uh, uh, and Jim Buss. And, you know, just, just, just to be clear, though, look, you still have to win to get these guys. You know, Kevin Durant wasn't going to go there just because Magic is running the show. Mm -hmm. uh, but, 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 you know, it, it at least gives you, uh, uh, I think, a better starting point. Yeah, I mean, Magic's cool. I mean, and, and his yeah. coolness, his coolness, Sean, as you know, transcends every generation. There are older people, uh, and by no means am I trying to disparage the older generation at all. I mean, that's certainly not my intent, but there are people, executives, that just come across as old. And that's a turnoff to uh, uh, to the youthful exuberance that a lot of these players are, are searching. So, I mean, we can talk in a million different ways. Uh, as champion, Magic's just cool, and he's cool with everybody. So it's certainly an asset. That's, of course, Sean Devaney, uh, Devaney with us. Uh, Sean, if I had a dollar, Sean, for every time I mess up your name, <laughs> uh, and we had a kangaroo court here at, at CBS Sports Radio, we'd have the sickest, most if, lavish party imaginable. I mess up I your name. Dollar, if I had a dollar for every time I've been called Devaney, I'd, I'd, I'd be a rich man, no question about it. Obviously, you know, don't take any offense here. All right, so what do you think happens the next day? Uh, well, you know, Jimmy Butler, Mello, there's names out there. There's limitations. There's uh, due to um, no trades, certainly with Carmelo. Does Magic try to reel in anything big, or does he stand pat? What happens in the next day, do you think? Yeah, you know, I think that's the big question, and, and because I had talked to several general managers, uh, uh, you know, before Magic came on board, and the feeling was uh, they're not trading any of those three prospects. Like they, they weren't even really taking any 
serious calls about them. Uh, and it wasn't until Magic came around that that started to change. And I don't know if he's actually going to, you know, within two days before uh, actually, you know, being there for, for, for some games with these young guys, uh, you know, Brandon Ingram, uh, D'Angelo Russell, Julius Randle, you know, before actually getting to really get inside those guys and, and understand uh, what he's got with them, I can't see him going out and, and pulling off a trade. But if they want to do something major, it's going to require at least one of those guys. Again, I, don't, I just don't think he's uh, going to pull the trigger that quickly. Uh, not to say that that something couldn't come back up no, I got you. Uh, I got you. around the draft, yeah. but, but 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 you know it's it's I, I don't think he's going to do anything major because I don't think the move is there right now. Right, but I want to throw this by and I, I threw it by Teague. I'm curious. And by the way, it's Sean Devaney with us here, of course, covers the NBA Sporting News. All right, we got through that relatively unscathed, Sean. Uh, I <laughs> listen. I am under no illusion that that at this point, and I watch him every night, that Carmelo Anthony is nothing more than a volume score with an eroding. Uh, athletic base in, in in terms of just just athletic prowess, uh, it is what it is, and he's got a no trade. He's got a couple of years to go. He's making big money, blah blah blah. But I floated this to Tiki. While I don't think he's a star anymore, at least uh, a night to night star, I do think that there's value in yeah. allowing young players to grow naturally while a veteran absorbs the spotlight. That includes the good and the bad end-of-game situations, I, I don't know that it would be the worst thing for the Lakers to kick the tires on Carmelo for that reason, where then the younger guys, provided you don't have to give them up at a trade with the Knicks to get Melo, they can kind of grow in a more organic nature without being accelerated before they're ready to actually take on that role. Yeah, no, and I, and I would agree with that. Uh, you know, and, and look, if, if, if the Lakers somehow can hold on to their draft pick this year, you know, they're, it's top three protected or else they got to send it to Philadelphia. They hold on to that pick. And that's something that I think that, you know, after the lottery, you start thinking, okay, well, maybe we trade either one of the young guys. If we have somebody in mind that we want with that pick, or we trade that pick uh, and bring in a guy like Carmelo Anthony, who can kind of, like you say, uh, uh, you, know, you know, give us a focus while these other guys uh, can make their mistakes and, and, and slowly get better. Uh, and of course you'd have to convince Carmelo to, to win the no, no trade clause. I think that's something he might do uh, if uh, if he wound up with the Lakers. So do I. Yeah, you know it's it's interesting when you think about uh, the rest of the league, Sean. Obviously, we're focused on the, the Lakers right now because of what just happened yesterday. But there are a lot of moves that could be made, and one that I don't know if, if is getting a lot of attention, but maybe could happen is Paul George leaving the the, the Pacers. He's not signing his deal. Uh, his that's sitting on the table apparently from Larry Bird for the max. Uh, he, he, we know he wants to be with a winner, and, and we know the trend. All-stars want to play with other all-stars. They don't have many, or any, really, in Indianapolis. Is he, can he go somewhere by tomorrow afternoon? Yeah, you know, it, it, that's interesting because, you know, it's, it's all year it's been, no, we're not trading him, no, we're not trading him. And really in the last 10 days or so, you started to hear, you know, maybe, maybe some more openness to that possibility as it's become clear that they're going to have to at least work to keep Paul George in the offseason. It's not going to be something where he's going to sit down and just sign the extension. He's going to meet with other teams. He, he's going to explore free agency. So if you're Larry Bird, you've got to consider, all right, what are our, what are our realistic chances here uh, and should we pull the trigger? The Pacers tend to operate, uh, of all teams uh, in the league, they tend to operate with just about as much secrecy as anybody. So I, I would think that there's a chance that, that they could surprise everybody and move Paul George. I know a team like Boston, uh, you, you know, which has sort of hit a wall with the Jimmy Butler stuff, uh, is, is uh, you know, very much interested and, and has reached out uh, for Paul George and, and, and trying to see what it would take to get him uh, to the Celtics. Uh, uh, so, yeah, that's, that, that's one that's sort of been on the back burner but uh, uh like i say you know knowing the paces and knowing the way that they operate uh that could be a surprise move uh, uh at the deadline tomorrow we're talking to sean devaney with us here of course tiki and tierney cbs sports radio as you heard deadline tomorrow a lot of big names a lot of possibilities floating out there sean's with the sporting news uh, let me throw this at you sean now to his credit john calipari is now perceptive enough to get out in front of stories and refute them before they even get written, you know, and, and hit enter on the keyboard to send them for, uh, to the editors. I mean, he's, he's very aware of what's happening. And he did this yesterday pertaining to the King's job because of Cousins and Anthony Davis. Now, I believe him. I, I believe that he's, he's quite happy in Kentucky. I do believe he'll scratch the NBA itch eventually uh, because I think guys like Izzo and certainly Coach K, they're probably, certainly Coach K, 
Uh, he's probably a little bit too old at this point. I think Izzo would have jumped by now if he want, if he really was you know, conditioned yeah. to do that or likely to do that. But do you think, and I'm going to throw John Wall's name in the mix here, is there any possibility between Cousins and Davis and Calipari, and I believe John Wall has two years to go contractually after this year, manageable money, 16, 17 million bucks a pop, I believe, that, that all those moving parts could possibly come together in New Orleans? Yeah, you know, look, there's uh, there's certainly that possibility. I just I just don't see. Cal- I, I think you're right, I, and I don't think Calipari uh, is uh, is is really looking to uh, uh, make the jump right now. Um, you know, and even even with those guys, you know, he, as much as uh, uh, he is connected with Anthony Davis, he had a hard time coaching Demarcus Cousins. You know, and, and you know, as much as he tried to put positive spin on that whole situation uh, uh, as it unfolded, uh, plenty of people in the NBA knew that Cousins was going to be a problem because of what they'd heard coming out of Kentucky. So, you know, I'm not sure that he necessarily wants to go Mm. coach DeMarcus Cousins again, Mm. uh, you know, on a professional level because it's much tougher uh, today. If it was tougher in college, it only gets tougher when you start throwing around, you know, $30 million a year. You know, the one team that we we feel like has a chance to, to, I don't know, threaten is is the right word, but get close to the Cleveland Cavaliers is the Boston Celtics. And I've heard, I I feel like I've been hearing this for three years or so, and Danny Ainge is just sitting on so many great assets. When are they going to do something? Or do we think they'll do something this year? Yeah, you know, I mean, they've been thwarted, uh, you know, pretty much every time that, that, that they've tried to get a big name. Uh, they've, they've come close. There's no question that they've had, you know, real, real discussions here. But, but, you know, it just always seems to fall apart. And, 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 and the team with the star player tends to get cold feet, whether it's the Clippers with Blake Griffin or, or the Bulls with Jimmy Butler, uh, situations like that. So, you know, I, it, it is going to happen. I really do think so because I think that they can see the writing on the wall, and that is if they use all these draft picks, you're not going to have room for them. You know, where, where, where are you going to? You've only got 12 guys on the roster here. You can't. You can't possibly put these guys. Uh, you, you know, all on your roster as you wind up drafting them. So yeah, you know, I do think that uh, that 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 they're they're going to have to make a move uh, either tomorrow. Uh, you know, certainly, like I say, they're they're going to keep calling about Paul George. They'll reach back out about Jimmy Butler uh, with Chicago. Uh, and if it doesn't happen, then then you know we'll have to see what happens uh, uh, after the lottery and. and and whether they can make a move uh, before the draft. But, uh, yeah, you know, I think that certainly in the next six months uh, we're going to have to see something, I think, if you're Danny Ainge, considering, uh, look, you know, Kevin Love has an injury. Uh, the Celtics have been playing very, very well lately. Uh, it, it seems like the opportunity is there for sort of them to sort of uh, uh, seize control of the Eastern Conference, at least in the regular season here. So, you know, yeah, you know, I think that they would really like to get this done uh, in the next day here. No doubt. Sean, really good stuff. Appreciate you time and obviously he'll be busy we'll talk to you again there's no doubt sean devity with us here covers the nba sporting news good stuff